Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing the All About My Palettes tag. This has been going around on YouTube for a couple of weeks now and I've actually had all of this stuff laid out for a few days. Um, so I figured I would try and film it. So if that sounds interesting, definitely stick around. Make sure you are subscribed. I currently have um, two giveaways going on. I haven't picked winners yet. I'm gonna try and do that this evening. So. You'll have one more day if you want to enter those. So yeah, let's jump into my palette. Okay, so the video that I saw was by um, Jessica Braun. She used to be Jam Beauty 89 I will leave her video down below. She didn't create the tag, but she did add some more categories to her. So that's the list that I'm going off of. So I'll try and remember and link her video down below. But there's been a bunch of YouTubers that have been doing this. So we're just gonna jump in. I have my list, I have post-its on the palettes and we're gonna jump in. So the first one is gonna be the newest palette to my collection. Now, technically the um, the palettes that I got in the Huda Beauty mystery bag would be the newest, but I decided not to include those and do the newest ones that I purchased myself. Um, so that would be the three that I got during the Sephora VIB sale. Take my post it off and they are still in the box. I bought them and never opened them. I got two from Melt. Um, I've never tried anything from Melt. So when I had, you know, and 15% off isn't a huge sale, but Melt palettes are quite expensive. I got the Smoke Session. I probably should have opened these before now to make sure they weren't broken, but I got the Smoke Session to pair along with Gemini because um, Smoke Session is mostly shimmer. And it's funny because the Melt palette I was gonna buy was the 27 palette, but looking at it, I realized there was only two shimmers and they were kind of dark shimmers. And I like, you know, a lighter shimmer on the lid. So I ended up getting Gemini, which also only has two shimmers, but I opted to get Smoke Session, which is mostly shimmer and only two mattes to pair with Gemini, so. We got those, so I will be doing a video on these because like I said, I've never tried anything from Melt. Just start a pile over here. I'll save the boxes. And then I got Lunar Beauty Strawberry Dream because this was already on clearance. And then I got an extra 15% off. So I actually bought the Melt palettes and then went back in like the next day. So there's the all my packaging's a little bit damaged, but it does have kind of a, oh, two of my shadows. See, and this is probably why I should have opened it sooner. Came, I can repress those. Came slightly broken, but we'll fix that later. I'll leave that out. But yeah, so I got those. I'll repress those as soon as I'm done. So I got that. Again, probably should open these right away because stuff does get damaged in shipping. So there are those. Those are my newest ones. Now my oldest palette, I have a couple that I've had for a while, but the oldest one that comes to mind is my Morphe Kathleen Lights collab. This is one of my, like the best Morphe palettes I think Morphe ever has done, like the formula of this. And you, you can see how beat up my packaging is, but the formula of this is so good. I don't know why the vault palettes were so problematic because the price point is the same and this is a larger palette than the vaults were. And I actually did a video comparing this to the vault palettes like a while ago, but this is still good. It still performs. Um, the Sugar Skull video I did last October, um, this is the gray. So I've thought about decluttering this palette um, over the years, but now because I've had it so long, I'm just gonna, I've decided I'm just gonna keep it until it hard pans, um, just because it's past the point that I would be comfortable giving it to somebody, but it's still good. It still performs well. So that would be my oldest palette. My most expensive. Now I did not buy this off of Jeffree Star's website. I got this on Poshmark. But I did pay for it. I think I got it for 70 and then there was shipping. 
so I paid a little over what retail was so I didn't like it wasn't crazy expensive but this is one of my most my favorite palettes in my collection he has since retired this you can still get this on Poshmark so if you want it um, it's still available on there I hope he brings this back because this it's such an interesting neutral palette this is one that I'm sure people are sick of me talking about because I talk about this palette all the time but I like all of the shades in here, the mattes and the shimmer. I don't know. To me, this is a very interesting neutral palette, and I just really, really like it. But for what I paid for it, um, this was more expensive than the Norvina Volume 3, which I didn't technically buy. That was a gift. But this is my most expensive palette value-wise, like what was spent on it. So, smallest palette... We have my little baby smoke balm palette. This is one that I would repurchase when I hit pan because if I do not have a brow bone highlight, I use this shade, what is it called? Smoking. Um, Luminous is a good um, transition shade and then striking is just a pretty bronzy shimmer, but I do, you can see the divot in there. I use this, like I said, if I don't have a brow bone shade that I like, this is the one that I use. And I got this as a bonus item when I first signed up for Tribe like a year and a half ago. I was like, oh, I'm never going to use that. I will repurchase this when this shade runs out just because I use this so much. So that would be my smallest palette. And then my largest palette. Um, I have a few. I have a couple large Morphe palettes. Um... I have the Volume 3 Norvina. I have the Game of Thrones palette, but this is longer than those. Like, it's not my widest palette by any means, but this is probably, of my large palettes, the most problematic to store because it's a long rectangle. So I went with this one for that reason. Um, but I love it. I think this is why it got such mixed reviews because I feel like there was a rushing and shipping. I think maybe when they were formulating these, there was some delay because you can see some of the pans are not in there perfectly. And when I got this, it had kind of a paint smell to it. It smells like vanilla right now and it's a little bit messy, like there's setting spray residue on it. But yeah, the pans are a little off center. So there was definitely some rushing happening with this, trying to get it out for their anniversary. If I forgot to mention, this is Too Faced. Um, anniversary palette. So you have their 1998 shades and then their 2018 shades. The formula of this is good, but this is a beast to store. And I think that's why people didn't get on with this as much because you only really have three true mattes. There are a lot of satins in here, like these ones up here that act when you blend them out as a matte, but there's only three like actual matte shades. So I think that was offsetting for people. And then it's just so big. Like it's just a weird size. It's, like I said, this is probably my most problematic palette because it's a long rectangle. Uh, more so than the Morphe palettes. I really need to clean this. It's bothering me how dirty it is in here. But the formula is good. I've never done a look with this that I didn't like, which is why I keep it. I do really like this palette, but I understand um, why people don't like it but it makes me sad that this palette didn't do better because to me the formula is really good and I don't mind all shimmer looks. My most affordable palettes, this was hard because I do have some ColourPop palettes but I think these were cheaper because they have raised the price of their plastic like nine pan palettes. I think those are $18 now. I think some of them I paid for $12. I think those are going for 18 now. I think these were, this, the original was like seven or eight on Poshmark. And then I think this goes for like 10 or 12 in Sephora. This is the Sof X Extra Spice by Makeup Revolution. So I think these are my cheapest palettes. I could be mistaken, but like I said, I think ColourPop has raised the price of those monochromatic I think they're like 15 or 18 now so I think these are a hair cheaper but there's the original again I bought this on Poshmark they discontinued this one and then this one I did get from Ulta 
but the quality is really, really good. I've done videos with both of these palettes and the quality is there. Most everyday palette, I have a lot. Um, one of my favorites is probably the gingerbread spice, the original, not the extra spicy. Um, to me, this is a neutral palette with a pop of color. Um, this is another one. I've never done a look with this that I didn't like. I get a lot of compliments when I use this palette. I even like the Sugar Daddy, no, no, Frostbite Me, this really crumbly one. I do like it. I do have to put a glitter glue down with it, but yeah, so for me, this is a good everyday palette, and mine doesn't really, it kind of smells like cookie, but the scent isn't too strong anymore. Then we have Overhyped. I picked two actually, um, the original Lolita and then the Naked Heat. I ended up getting this on, ooh, whacking myself. I ended up getting this on Poshmark because people like still talk about the Naked Heat. Like they still, people love this palette. Um, I don't think this has been used. I I think the lady I got it from swatched like one or two shades, but it's still got the brush. It's practically like brand new. I haven't used it yet, but again, like this is one people talked about, like still talk about the Naked Heat. And it's fine. To me, it's a warm palette. I mean, I bought it. I wanted to try it. I just don't quite understand why the madness came with that. And then this is... When this came out, you know, people were dying for this palette. And then I think people were a little like underwhelmed. It's all matte. I got this on a Sephora sale. Mine, um, the package got a little run over. So my mirror is shattered. I put some tape over it because glass was falling, but I like it. I've used it. It works good. I don't have a problem with it, but again, this was one I think people were dying for a full size Lolita palette. And then when it came out, people are like, eh. It is a good palette though. I do, I'm not, I'm glad I got it on sale. I'm not mad at that. So those two are ones that people were really like losing their minds over. One that I think personally was underhyped was the original Pumpkin Spice. The, um, Too Faced does these collections with HSN around the holidays. I have their second one also. This was the first one that they did. This is just a really good neutral palette. Like it's boring, it's nothing exciting. You can see all the dents. I've used this a ton. I still love this. I like this better than the second one, but this one had is such a high, like top five favorite palettes um, that I think that's why I don't get on with the second one as well. Cause the formula to me is the same, but people didn't really talk about these collections. And I think they didn't really send these out in PR. You could only get them through HSN. But to me, and I've talked about this one to death. This, if you can get it on Poshmark, to me is still a good palette. I really like it. Again, you can see how much I've used it, still use it, still love it. I don't know why more people weren't talking about it. Uh, most nostalgic. I have two. Mike got me both of these. Um, Probably this is more nostalgic than this one, but I'll give you the little like story. This, and I've mentioned this before, our, we had only been dating for a couple of weeks. Uh, it was our first Valentine's Day. This was what he bought me. He asked me what my favorite brand was. So he got me the mini white chocolate chip. Um, I messed up two of them. Don't dip a wet brush straight into these. They don't like it. Um, I do have the full size white chocolate bar and it is also nostalgic to me because of the mini. The shades in here are in the full size. So that's the only reason I'm not as upset about messing up the shadows, but I will never get rid of this because this is the first thing he ever bought me. And then that following Christmas, he knew that I really, really had been wanting the original chocolate bar. So he bought this for me for Christmas. I do still really like it. I still use it. I travel with it. I don't know why my cherry chocolate has these little, you can see those little like holes in it, but my palette's not that old. I've only had it like two years, three years. It's not super old compared to other, you know, chocolate bar palettes because this palette's been around for a long time, but those are my nostalgic one and Mike also bought me the gingerbread spice so a lot of the two-faced ones he's bought for me 
most colorful, I have a lot of colorful palettes, but the one that I probably use the most, and I actually use this more than I thought I was going to, would be Jawbreakers. There's a lot of rainbow looks that I copy off of YouTube and Instagram that other people do that I am actually able to do with this palette. And I have another one coming up that I want to do, and I will probably be using this in Blue Blood. But I just really like it. He did a good job with this. I didn't think I was going to use it a lot when I bought it. I had reservations after I bought it. But I use this one a lot. Like I said, there's a lot of rainbow looks where people are pulling from different palettes. And I'm able to recreate that look using just this. So it's definitely come in handy. There are some problematic shades for me like licorice. Um sometimes is difficult to blend and delicious is a little bit patchy the dark navy but I am able to make them work aside from that I use this palette a lot pleasantly surprised um most used palette I have a couple but the one that really like came to mind was probably be my Huda Smoky Obsessions and the inside again needs to be cleaned the shimmers in here are very very messy it's disgusting. I need to clean this one badly, but I take this one traveling. Anytime I go anywhere, I use this one a lot. This is a good like everyday palette. It's really easy to use. You have a nice black. Um, I use these a lot in conjunction with other palettes. This shade right here is probably the only one that I probably only used once, but every other shade in here I use like to death because obviously it looks cruddy, but most used and then an honorable mention would be a limited edition palette. Um, I have a few, but the Urban Decay Electric. And again, I got this on Poshmark. It is still available on Poshmark if anybody wants to buy one, but it's still good. This is an old palette, so buy at your own risk, but mine works just fine. Like the lady still has the seal on the mirror, still had the brush. The shades in here work just fine. Again, I will probably keep this until it hard pans. So yeah, those are my palettes. Let me know which one was your favorite that I showed. I would be curious um, to find out. So thank you guys so, so much. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you go enter my giveaways. I'm going to try and pick winners tonight. And hopefully everybody is having a wonderful weekend. And I will see you all in another video very, very soon. Bye, everyone.